Hello everyone, we are going to be discussing for this video pages 172 through 198. And most of this section of reading is concerned with the unfolding investigation. In the previous night's reading, Floyd Wells had revealed that, um, you know, he knew what Dick's plan was all along and they now know to be looking for Dick and Perry. And so most of this reading is concerned with the detectives heading out west and checking out specifically mostly Perry's life and what he had been up to in the months leading up to the murder. But at the very beginning of this night's reading, we see Dick and Perry, they're still hitchhiking across the country and they're trying to find a place where they can um, settle down a little bit, but they're also looking for someone to kill and take their car. And at the beginning of the reading, it seems like they found this person. They meet this man named Mr. Bell. He's a traveling salesman and he does Dick and Perry the kindness of picking them up, which they in return are going to end up killing him and stealing his car and going off with it, which just further shows, you know, what nice, well thought out, very planning, great guys they are. So they take the car or they plan to take the car and they get into the car with Mr. Bell. And fortunately for Mr. Bell, what ends up happening is that he picks up another hitchhiker and the presence of that other witness, that other person makes Dick and Perry second think their thoughts of murder and they don't end up killing Mr. Bell. Um, and I, I think the way that Truman Capote writes that is very much on the side of his fiction side of the way he likes to do things because there's this line where he says, you know, um, little did he know that picking up that other hitchhiker had saved his life and it's a very dramatic moment. But most of the rest of the chapter or the section of reading kind of follows um, the investigators as they learn about Perry. So the first thing that we learn is that in October and November of the year that the Clutters were murdered, Perry spent in Las Vegas at this hotel that used to be a brothel. And if you don't know what that is, look it up. I recommend not doing a Google image search on that one. Um, and it's a very cheap hotel. It's not in a nice part of town. And he ends up having to leave there um, partially because he's run out of money, but also because he needs to head to Kansas to meet Dick. And if you remember, he was also thinking about trying to meet Willie J. So it was this kind of um, double-sided journey that he was trying to make. Um, and when the investigators get there, they um, talk to the woman who runs the hotel and they also find a box of Perry's possessions. And it's the same sorts of things that we've seen Perry with all along, sort of sentimental things with not a lot of value that seem to be really important to Perry, um, even though other people would just kind of laugh at it or put it aside. Um, and so after this, they travel to San Francisco. The investigators travel to San Francisco and they interview Perry's sister. Now, if you remember, Perry's other sister and his brother are both dead. They both more or less killed themselves. His sister's death seems to be fueled by alcohol. Um, and we find that Perry's remaining sister really wants nothing to do with him. She says she's afraid of him, but what we really read and what we really see in the passage is that what she's really afraid of is becoming like him or becoming like her other siblings who were all failures. She's afraid that their evil or their downfall is going to kind of rub off on her and she really doesn't want anything to do with them. But after the detectives leave, she looks through a photo album from her family. And we see that at first it really seemed like even though their mother was an alcoholic, the Perry siblings were going to do well, that they were going to be okay. If you remember Perry's brother and his sister stayed with their mom and he went off with his dad and we see pictures of them, you know, doing well in school and having all of these great accomplishments. But unfortunately we do end up seeing them also having this really great downfall. And again, it just shows this idea that we talked about in one of the last lectures, which is nature versus nurture. Through showing us, um, through Capote showing us some of Perry's other siblings, it really leads you to wonder, did any of these siblings have a chance? His sister Barbara, the one that gets interviewed, the one that's looking at the photos, is a relatively successful woman. She has a family, children, a home, a husband, but three-fourths of the rest of the children in that family had a terrible demise. And it really leads you to wonder, was that something genetic about who they came from? Was it something about how they were raised? What really contributed to Perry, especially being who he is when we find him in the book? Um, one of the things specifically that I think is really important in this passage that she talks about is how Perry never went to school and how bitter he was about that. Because we see later um, that he does finish school while he's in prison the first time he takes um, classes to get his high school diploma. But, you know, Perry really views himself as someone who is intelligent 
and being made to never go to school, um, his father forcing him to help out. In one passage, Perry describes the relationship with his father, and he says that his father treated him like an N-word. And that's really symbolic of this feeling of, you know, his father pushing him to work all the time and never really caring about him. And I really think there's a parallel with the relationship to Dick there, where Dick doesn't really care about Perry and is just pushing him to do what he wants him to do, you know, be this killer. Um, so that's kind of the investigation side of these pages. Then we go back down to Mexico and we find out that Dick and Perry have been unsuccessful in finding good paying jobs. And Dick decides that they should go back to Kansas City. Perry is dead set against this plan. He realizes how dangerous it is for them to go back to the scene of the crime, especially because they just passed all those bad checks there before they left. But Dick is a dominant personality. What he wants to happen is what is going to happen. And Perry's really afraid of going back there because he thinks that if they're caught, then they'll be given the death penalty. And, um, you know, I don't know if you guys research them at all. I hate to give a spoiler alert, but that is what ends up happening to them. I and mean, this is a very terrible choice that they've made. And I think in terms of the developing story that Capote puts this in here and Dick's forcefulness and Perry's indecision and lack of desire to go there to really build the drama. We know they get caught. That's on the back of the book. Okay, we know that that happened. I told you that day one of our discussion. And this just builds up to that point where they do get caught. Um, so near the end of this reading, there is a dream sequence that, De that Dewey has. And this is kind of confusing for a lot of people. Um, but basically what ends up happening to make a long dream short is that Dewey feels as if he's being mocked by the killers. He sees them in a diner hanging out with Herb Clutter, which is obviously weird because they're the ones who killed him. So why would they be hanging out with him? Why would Herb Clutter be there? He's dead. And Dewey goes to try to chase the killers. They end up swimming through the world's largest swimming pool, which if you remember at the beginning of the book was supposedly in Garden City at this time. And then they end up in the cemetery and he sees his father's grave. He sees the graves of the Clutters and he sees the killers laughing at him. And this is a symbolic thing again of you know, he's frustrated, he doesn't know where he's going with things, and he doesn't know what to do about it. And the dream really, you know, it just shows the psychological effects that continuing to work on the case and being frustrated with the case and not making progress are having on him. Um, but at the end of that night's reading, and again, Truman Capote weaves such a great story, they find out that Dick and Perry are back in Kansas City. They've been, you know, spotted by someone. And so this is this chance for Dewey. He thinks we can catch them. We can get them. Because I think there really is this concern for him that they'll continue to do bad things and that they are dangerous because of the violent nature of the killings, I think he's a little afraid of them and what they could do. And obviously he wants to wrap up this case. It's causing him, all the people in town, a lot of anguish and he wants to be the ones to bring them in and soon. He has this kind of Christmas deadline that he set for himself. So especially on the heels of that terrifying dream, I think he's probably very excited to get the news that Dick and Perry are nearby and they're not off in the middle of nowhere. He might be able to catch them.